Right, now question two and three both wants to know what the intensity of a beam will be, monoenergetic beam. Remember, this is important. We're only looking at monoenergetic beams where all of the beams in the X-ray, all the photons in the X-ray beam are at the same energy or very close to the same energy. Uh, we sometimes say photon beams, sometimes say X-ray beam. On all, it's, they're all photon beams. Um, but our assumption is that they're all um, of the same wavelength, more or less, the same frequency, more or less. Uh, once that is no longer true, it becomes a bit slightly more complicated. Not by much, but for our purposes, we always look at monoenergetic ones. Okay, so if it's monoenergetic, both question two and three wants to know what the intensity of the beam will be after it is passed through a certain thickness of material. Okay, and there are two main ways in which we can do that. One is relative to, is by using the whole value thickness, the HVL value, whole, whole va value layer, the thickness of material uh, which is needed to cut the intensity in half. That's the one way to use that. And the other is to uh, use that exponential uh, formula with a linear attenuation coefficient and directly calculate it that way. Okay, so the first one is relative to the HVL. So we're told that the monoenergetic photon beam has a HVL in lead of 1.3 millimeters. Okay, so this uh, 1.3 millimeters will be specifically for lead and for the photon beam at whatever energy it is at. You change the energy of the photon beam or you change the material from lead to something else, the HVL will, will change. Now, if the in incident beam with no absorber has an intensity of 120 milli uh, Rutkins or rats, they don't specify what the unit is, it could be Rutkins, determine the intensity after it passes through 3.5 millimeters of lead. Okay, so this is what it was initially. Right, now, this is with a, if you know the value layer, this is quite an easy calculation. We know how much it takes for it to halve, only 1.3 millimeters of lead. So if it passes the 3.5 millimeters of lead, how many times does it halve? Well, if it is, one, is the HP, HVL is 1.3 millimeters and it passes through twice that, 2.6 millimeters, then it will halve twice. Or if it passes through three times that, 3.9 millimeters, it will pass, uh, it will halve three times. But 3.5, uh, it's not a simple as that. Uh, we can't do it in our heads, we'd have to calculate it. Um, so that's the beam halves n times. where n is now equal to thickness of material 3.5 uh, millimeters over 1.3 millimeters. Okay, now I can calculate this, but I'm just going to leave it as 35 over 13, because why not? I'm, I'm not done with this, I'm going to do a calculation still, and this is an easy enough fraction to just carry along in my work. Otherwise, I have to decide how many significant figures I want to use. So let's leave it as 35 over 13. Now, if you want to calculate a bit an idea, that's going to be like 2 point something. So 35 divided by 13 is uh, 2.69. So it's approximately 2.7 times that the beam will halve. Okay. So what is the intensity then? Thus, the intensity will be what it was initially and um, oh, there's multiple ways that we can write this. Uh, I just write it this way, half to the power or if another way it might make more sense to you is uh, like this i equal to it is what we had initially but it halves 2 to the n times you can write like that but I, I prefer this way I'm not sure why okay so initially we're given that what it is initially the initial intensity and it's half to the power 35 over 13 okay so it's debatable, oh, it's not really clear if that 120 is two or three significant figures accuracy, but regardless, these two are only two significant figures, so I'm only going to provide the answer to two significant figures, so let's do that 120 times 0.5 to the power 35 to the power 13. Okay, 18.56, so I'm just going to provide two significant figures then. 19 really. Okay, so this is pretty easy. 
if you know what the HVL value is, and you know the thickness of the new thickness of the absorber, then you just divide the, it with the HVL to see how many times it halves, and then you do the silly, silly calculation. Right. Now, next one is also uh, very easy, but uh, just it requires a few more steps. Um, but that's where we use the formula, the exponential relationship between the intensity of the beam and the thickness of the absorber. Right. Okay. So let's read the question. So we've got again a energy energetic beam, right? Which we'll always have now. Uh, um, and now for the pro problems that we'll be looking at, uh, right, there's that intensity. Okay, so that's intensity of the beam. The relative intensity of the beam drops to 0.775, that is 77.5% relative. Relative to what? Relative to what it was initially. In other words, 77.5% of that. And that is when it passes through 0.8 millimeters of aluminium. What is the linear attenuation coefficient and what will intensity and the relative intensity of the beam be after it passes through? Okay, so the intensity after it passes through a different thickness, we can calculate that directly with the formula only if we have the initial intensity uh, uh, and we have the near linear attenuation coefficient, which is something we can easily calculate. We've got the initial intensity, we just need to calculate the linear attenuation coefficient, then we can use the formula. So let's calculate linear attenuation coefficient. Right. So where does that linear attenuation coefficient feature? It features in this formula. The intensity is the initial intensity times e to the minus mu l. That's the linear attenuation coefficient times the thickness of the material x. Right. And what I'm given is that the relative intensity, i over i0 times 100%, is 77.5%. Right. Or just, in other words, I over I0 is 0 0.775. Okay, that is what was given. So I over I0, that is given, is e to the minus ULx. All right. Now I'm after this, a linear attenuation coefficient. How am I going to get it? By just using, taking the logarithm on both sides. I'm going to use the natural logarithm lin. So if I do that on both sides, uh, let, no, let's include the steps even. Uh, I don't always include this step, but let's include it lin of e to the minus u l x lin is just log base e so here is written to what power e has to be raised to get e to the minus mu l x which is just trivially minus mu l x lin of i over i zero all right okay um so what i'm after is mu l and that is in other words equal to minus Len of i over i zero over x. In other words, minus len of zero point seven seven five over whatever x is. Okay, x. Uh, I can make this meters if I want. It doesn't really matter. Um, I can have any unit for x here: meters, kilometers, light years, whatever I want. It's just that the unit of the linear attenuation coefficient should then be the inverse of that. So if I make this centimeters. And that has to be per centimeter. And if I make this millimeters, now that be, has to be per millimeters. These two together are dimensionless. So let's keep it millimeters. Um, what is x now? This happens when um, it passes through 0.8 millimeters. Oh, so we don't have a lot of accuracy. You see this, we only have one significant figure. Okay, so that's not good for accuracy. So we only have we can only really be kind of confident about one significant figure, so then of 0.775 divided by 0.8, answer will be minus that, so so we can just say it is uh, 0 0.3 per millimeter. Well, that's the best that we can say. Um, well, instead, actually what we'll do is 0 0.32 per millimeter, which is approximately 0 0.3 per millimeter. I'm going to do further calculations, and I prefer not to do calculations with a random value. But the final answer can only be one significant figure. Okay. So now what do we want? Uh, what is the actual intensity? So the intensity of the 3 millimeters will, in other words, be... Uh, okay, so let's just write the formula again. Okay, so it's going to be 800 Newtons, what it was initially, times e to the minus... Uh, I'm going to put the bracket one here, and x is what? 3 millimeters, 3.0 millimeters. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. 
<sighs> e to the power minus 0 0.32 times 3 okay times 800 okay 306 but I'm only really sure about one significant figure okay so there's intensity of the three millimeters uh, only thing that is also asked is the relative intensity so uh, I'm going to have a lot of space for that so let's do that over here so that's the one answer other one is the relative intensity so relative to what it was initially so this will be uh, let's skip some steps here 3 over 8 what is 3 over 8 uh, well um, did they ask for percentages no they didn't so I can just write that that is uh, what is one at um, 2 over 8 is 0.25 and 1 over 8 is 0.125 so this is what point three seven five yeah I think uh, but but I yeah 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 okay I should um, um so but only really sure about um so this is approximately forty percent okay and uh, that's it.